Born today, June 10th in 1916, William Rosenberg. He died September 22nd, 2002 at 86 years old. You would know him by his brand that he founded. He was an American entrepreneur who founded Dunkin' Donuts. He founded the franchise in 1950 in Quincy, Massachusetts. He was one of the early pioneers in name brand franchising. When he bought the uh, the first donut shop in 48, it was called Open Kettle. And by the end whoa, of whoa, 20... Whoa, 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 Open Kettle? Open Kettle, K-E-T-T-L-E. He bought one donut shop in Quincy, Mass., called Open mm. Kettle. He changed the name to Dunkin' Donuts. At the end of uh, 2019, there were more than 12,000 outlets in, in uh, 32 countries with $1.4 billion in annual sales. Rosenberg was born in Boston, and uh, he was one of four children of Jewish-German uh, Jewish immigrants from Prussia. And he had to leave school early to go help the family because uh, during the Depression, the family lost their store. So he left school in the eighth grade to go find a number of jobs. He worked at Western Union. He also worked at Simcoe, which was a company that distributed ice cream from refrigerator trucks. And uh, he kept working his way up. And uh, right after, or right at the start of World War II, he joined Bethlehem Steel. And uh, he would uh, he would later go on to become the very first Jewish trade union delegate for uh, for Bethlehem Steel. And he borrowed a hundred. He borrowed a thousand dollars. He had fifteen hundred dollars in war bonds, and he borrowed a thousand dollars. And he took his knowledge of food and decided to open up something called the Industrial Luncheon Services Company. And you remember those silver trucks that would show up at all those workplaces, and they would open up the the flap, and then there would be sandwiches and coffees and all that sort of stuff. Breaks Favorite for thing books. because there was a pattern to that aluminum too, right? Remember that? Yep. There was like a, a bit of a pattern, and it was always the same. The side went up, and there was pre—I think it was pre-made sandwiches and drinks and stuff. What a cool thing! Right. So he started this. He created his own catering vehicles, and the sides rose up to reveal the sandwiches and the snacks and so forth. All the stainless steel shelves. And they said it really was the prototype for a lot of today's mobile catering vans. And uh, within a short period of time, he had over 200 trucks that would go out every day. But he noticed that 40% of his revenue was coming from coffee and donuts. So he thought, you know what? I, we should start a coffee and donut shop. I, I always love these sort of things, right? I mean, here's this guy. He's out catering thing, busting his hump, doing this vending thing with these trucks, and realizes that most of his revenue, almost half of it's coming from coffee and donuts. So he opens this, he buys his donut shop, Open Kettle, renames it Dunkin' Donuts. And he said most bakeries, which is funny if you go to a bakery, he said they'll only offer three or four types of donuts. He offered 52 different varieties of donuts when he opened. And uh, he decided to then franchise the shop after he had six of them. And uh, by 1959, he uh, started a trade show group for franchises as well, which was the very first franchise group uh, later on became to be known as the International Franchise Association in the 60s. And uh, he, he, on a side note, he bought a farm called Wilrose Farm, and he became the largest breeder of uh, standard bred horses in New England and uh, had that as a hobby. But uh, I always like when these, these sort of folks um, rise up to see a need for something or a, a need for or stumble on the fact that, hey, I've got this catering business and I'm finding out a lot of people are, are buying coffee and donuts and starts this donut shop. You know, I did that work for a short time, John, with Salad Works, which was a similar story. The guy was a chef at a country club, and in the mid-'80s, he would start getting all these requests for just big salads with some protein on them. So it was the reverse of getting a big meal and then a side salad. They wanted the side salad to be the center of the plate and maybe throw a little chicken or beef or something on it or fish. And that's how Salad Works started, the same sort of thing. Somebody noticed wow. what was going on in the kitchen and then decided to you know, capitalize on it. So a couple of cool birthday, things about Rosenberg. this yeah, a couple of cool things about this story. One, um, you know, if he had kept that name, whatever, the Open Kettle. Open Kettle. Uh, so clearly the smart thing that he did was renaming and coming up with Dunkin' Donuts, right? <laughs> like, it's perfect. And it, was Dunkin' Donuts still individually owned or did Willie Hortons buy them? What was that Canadian coffee uh, Tim, chain? Tim, used to, Tim, Tim Hortons. Hortons. Yeah, is is that who ended up buying Dunkin' Donuts, or are they well, still you know, independent? Well, they no Dunkin' Donuts is still its own. Now I don't know exactly if it's owned by a holding company, but Tim Hortons is the equivalent of Dunkin' Donuts in Canada. Canada, and they they bought most of the whoever the franchisee was that owned a lot of the New York outlets. They bought them and made all the Dunkin' Donuts Tim Hortons. Remember? 
Yeah, because so. back in the day when we were on Sirius, um, you came into the studio one day and you had a Tim Hortons cup. Yeah. And normally you would get a Dunkin' Donuts because I think that was on your way out of Penn Station. You actually walk right by one of the um, one of their franchises and you're like, oh, uh, Tim Horton came and bought up the Dunkin' Donuts there. So, and yeah, Dunkin' you know, Donuts, I, I believe, is better. I really do believe they're better than than uh, Tim Hortons. And, you know, I, Dunkin' Donuts, I know you're not a coffee drinker, John, but there, there is a funny thing with Dunkin' Donuts. They, depending upon who the franch, franchisee is, they all taste a little different. And in certain areas, like here where I am in PA, there's three or four of them within five miles. Everybody knows which one to go to. That seems to be the cleanest and tastes the best. So that's uh... <laughs> I want, I, I, and that's a mystery. Maybe that has to do with filters and water and who knows what else. But um, they also sell Dunkin' Donuts did a brand extension. And you could buy their uh, ground their their ground coffee like yeah. you would buy like Starbucks or something like that. And a lot of people do buy Dunkin' Donuts ground coffee, right, to make it at home. Yes, uh, we have it. I don't particularly care for it. I, I like. I'm a Pete's fan. I like Pete's coffee. P E E T apostrophe. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love Pete's. And you and I used to. I used to make you stop when we'd be in California. We'd go to the Santa Monica Boulevard, the Pete's, because we didn't have them back east then. But, but now they're here. Oh, that's right. All right, excellent business birthday, and it's a cool business story on top of it. And he made some key correct decisions to get yeah. that to where it is today.